Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Rare Candy here today. We are back on PTCGO and today we're going to be taking a look at kind of an old favorite that we're going to be retooling for the current standard format. And today we're going to be taking a look at Firebox, Fire Toolbox. This is a, you know, a deck that's previously been very, very dominant, um, but it did lose a couple things in the rotation like a lot of decks. But nevertheless, we're still going to try our hand at the deck here. See if it still has what it takes to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of the things in the current format. And actually, too, want to give a quick shout out to one of our patron GX members, Kristen. She was the one who actually selected us to cover this deck on the channel today. So if you guys want to learn more about how to have an even bigger say over the types of content we put out on this channel and also help support us in the process, I have a link down below in the description if you guys want to learn more about that perk. But yeah, Kristen wanted to see actually Reshizard in particular. And while this isn't a Reshizard deck, I think this is probably the, the best application you're going to see for Reshizard at the moment. It's just going to be like a, a tool in our welder toolbox here. And one more quick plug before we get into the actual meat potatoes of this deck profile. If you guys need any cards to complete this deck or any others, you guys can head over to our friends at ptcgostore.com. Use that coupon code RAREcandy at checkout. Save yourself some money. And of course, our patrons have a bigger discount code of their own as well. So like I said, if you guys do need some cards for PTCGO, check out our friends over at ptcgostore.com. But getting back into the actual deck, guys, as you guys can see, this is going to be primarily just a welder deck. You can see we only have the four copies of welder in the deck. No bosses orders, no nothing like that. And the reason specifically for no copies of boss orders is we have the 2-2 two -two Ninetales. So Ninetales is one of the cards from this deck that does remain after rotation, has that nine Tentations ability. We can discard two fire cards from our hand, or fire energies, I should say, from our hand, and then switch our opponent's active with one of their bench Pokemon. So since we're trying to use Welder every turn, it's very difficult a lot of the time to, you know, take a turn off from using Welder to use Boss's Orders. And this is going to be, I think, generally a more efficient way at gusting our opponent's, uh, you know, active Pokemon out of the way and to attack something else that we might want. So it's going to be one of our key support Pokemon, one of our key bench setters in the deck. But getting on to, I think, some of the more important cards here, uh, our different Toolbox of Fire Pokemon. Uh, and some non-fire Pokemon, but let's start with our fire attackers specifically here. So we have the Heatran GX. Of course, this is going to be mainly for that hot burn GX attack. Uh, you know, unfortunately, the fire toolbox did lose a couple of its previous like one-shotting options it used to have in the deck. So Heatran is actually going to be one of the few decent like one-shotting uh, cards we can use here. So hot burn, of course, just does 50 times the amount of energy attached to this Pokemon. And we also have that Burning Road ability. Whenever Heatran is on your bench and becomes your active, you can move any fire po or fire energy from any of your Pokemon to Heatran. So, you know, mid-game we can slap this guy down, maybe take a big one-hit knockout. That's sort of our ideal, uh, you know, situation with Heatran here. Uh, we have Ninetales V up next. So it has that Ninetales Shapeshifter attack, which is pretty cool. Plays right into the, like, toolbox style effect of, uh, you know, this deck is going for. So we choose one of our opponent's uh, active Pokemon's attacks and use it as this attack. So there's definitely no shortage of good attacks to copy in the format. You know, we have things like Brave Blade, Ultimate Ray, uh, etc. Uh, there's just no shortage of decent attacks. This does get a little bit weaker against something like Eternatus or like Mad Party. But against most of the other decks, uh, this actually gives you a couple more options to potentially attack with. Uh, Flamethrower also can be okay. I guess 180 for 4 isn't the best damage to energy ratio. But, you know, it's just another sort of a option we have. We can knock out Crobats with this. That is one thing it is worth pointing out, I suppose. Uh, we do have one copy of Reshi's Art. Of course, this was the main card Kristen wanted to see uh, a deck built around. And Reshi's Art actually, you know, even though it's fallen off in recent months, you know, after getting in a good bit of games with this deck, kind of got reminded how strong this card can be. Uh, one of the things I do like about Reshi's Art is the fact that it has substantially more HP than some of our other Pokemon. Uh, unlike our other attackers, this thing can actually take a hit from B Brave Blade and not get knocked out. Unless our opponent's, you know, playing something like Zigzagoon, Vitality Band, Shrine of Punishment in addition to their ADP. But most of the time, you know, Rush's Art can take a hit, and that's one of the things I do like about it. And it also has a couple of good attacks of its own. Flare Strike is really good against the different sort of, uh, you know, two prize Pokemon we have running around in the format. Double Blaze GX, also another decent little one-shotting option we have. Unfortunately, we can't scale to hit VMAXs and one shot those but against all of the tag teams and everything else double ways can still be a pretty heavy hitting attack here 
Outrage, of course, also pretty good. Uh, we have one copy of Victini V. Victini has the Spreading Flames attack. You attach three Fire Energy from discard to your Pokemon any way that you like. So especially in the mid game, like where uh, Volcanion gets a lot worse, Spreading Flames is a much better sort of, you know, energy accelerating attack in the mid to late game. Uh, also it does have energy burst here. It does 30 times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. So this can be good against a couple things. Maybe if you play against something like a Scorch deck or like a Lapras VMAX deck or something, this might be a decent attack. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just another option we have, you know, in our toolbox here uh, to play around with. Now I will say Victini has been one of the weaker cards I've been using up until now. It's seen... Uh, it's one of the cards I whip out the fewest I've found, but I definitely do think there is still utility to Victini here. Uh, and then from there we have the two copies of Volcanian to round out our fire Pokemon. Uh, Flare Starter, really good attack. We're only playing two Volcanian in this particular deck, uh, but Flare Starter I think is still pretty solid. I think we can find this card you know, pretty consistently as well. Uh, Flare Starter, you know, we want to be able to find this going first, or I'm sorry, yeah, going first, but going second. <laughs> going second, but on our first turn. Uh, because we can get three fire energies out of discard, or not out of discard, that's our Victini. Out of deck, and attach them to our Pokemon any way that we like. So even though we are playing kind of a lower count compared to, I think, what some of the Scent Scorch decks have been playing, we have four Quick Ball and four Communication in this deck. So that's going to naturally allow us more outs to Volcanion and also allow us to find Ninetales as well. And then from there, outside of our draw Pokemon like Crobat, Dedenne, Eldegoss, we do have a couple of other non-fire Pokemon in this deck. We have Cramorant V, of course, the Dedenne killer himself with Spit Shot. We discard all energy from this Pokemon, does 160 to one of your opponent's Pokemon. So this can knock out the Dedennes. And also you can do some cool defensive plays here where you use nine tails to gust up something with maybe like a two or three retreat cost on the bench that doesn't have energy strand that and then snipe behind it with cramorant and uh you know sometimes that can buy you an extra turn to get in another attack before your cramorant goes down uh we have one copy of double v so double's kind of cool here it has that 30 damage reduction giving it effectively 240 hp which is a great number, uh, because if we're playing against like a Zossian deck and they haven't used Altered Creation, we can tank a hit through Brave Blade, which is pretty cool. Uh, but it has this Revenge Blast attack. It is 120 plus 30 more for each prize card your opponent has taken. So if they've taken all five, you know, and they just have that one remaining, we can hit 270, which is a pretty good number because we can actually one-shot tag teams and, uh, you know, pretty much any two or one prizer that's going to be remaining. I really like the copy of Double and Cramorant as well because if we do run into the uh, Zacian Luck Metal deck that plays the like heavy Bronzong line, we will need some other ways at doing damage to those Pokemon. Uh, then from there for our attackers, we just have one copy of Hoopa for the Evil Admonition attack. There's 10 plus 20 more for each of your opponent's Pokemon that has an ability. So one thing we don't really have a good out against is going to be Eternatus. I think Eternatus is going to be a trickier matchup. They play no Dedenes, so we can't snipe those with Cramorant. And nothing else can easily, you know, one-shot an Eternatus. So I like Hoopa here. It's just a one-prizer, but it can really soften up those Eternatus for you to come in and clean up uh, your knockouts with on your next turn. Uh, then from there, just a couple of trainer cards of importance. We do have two copies of Reset Stamp. I really like a heavy Reset uh, stamp count this deck since we play no copies of Marnie and you know every time they take a knockout we want to go reset stamp knockout of our own and just kind of keep our opponent at a low hand size in the mid to late game. Uh, speaking of low hand sizes we do play one copy of Lucky Egg. This is going to be our Marnie slash reset stamp um, like counter card I guess. I wouldn't mind a second Lucky Egg in the deck but um, that because it kind of it's kind of hard to find when you need it that's the issue I've been finding. So this could even be kind of a flexible spot, but I like Lucky Egg just to give us some insurance against those hand disruption cards if need be. So of course, if our Pokemon with Lucky Egg gets knocked out, we draw until we have seven. Uh, we have the one copy of Pow Pad just to get back our uh, Welders in addition to our Eldegoss. We play no other supporters, so we really want to make sure we can use those Welders every single turn if possible. Uh, we have copies of Ordinary Rod and Fire Crystal, which I think are kind of unusual inclusions for this deck. Uh, in previous iterations, but since we no longer have Victini Prism Star in the deck since it rotated, I think there's actually a case to be made to playing actual Fire Crystal cards and Ordinary Rod to get back energies instead. 
because uh, that was usually one of the big reasons you wanted that really insanely heavy energy count of around like 17 18 energies uh, but like i said since victini rotated uh, i've cut our energies down to 15 and we're now playing a couple copies of fire crystal and ordinary rod i liked ordinary rod as well because we can get back Cramorant and hoopa those are some of the big cards i found i really like to recycle in the matchups that they're good in um, so yeah, I've actually kind of been liking scaling back the energy count and including more of like recovery cards in their place here. Um, but other than that, guys, just a couple of switching cards and uh, you know some giant hearts to round out the list. So a little bit of a long-winded deck profile part here, but again, we have a lot of one ofs and things to go over. But this is going to be the deck. I think the deck's actually been performing pretty decently for me up until this point. So let's end some games and we'll see how uh, Fire Toolbox is going to fare. Okay, so let's see. We are going to call it the coin flip. We do lose. Let's see. Our opponent is going to choose to go first. All right. And what do we start with here? I'll say sure to Reshizard. Not sure what we're playing against, but we have the switch, so we can always switch this if we do need to. Okay, so it looks like a Mewtwo and Mew deck which I think we should be able to handle that pretty decently. Yeah, so it's fine, we'll hang on to that. Alrighty. So of course, do they have a Dedene or something to toss their hand with? Okay, so they have a Quick Ball so they can toss away Charizard. Charizard's kind of annoying in particular just because it can hit 300, which can knock out our Reshizard. Uh, that's sort of like one of the main things that makes Reshizard good is the fact that it can usually like tank a hit, but it's probably not going to be the case with this thing. So I wouldn't mind Cramorant getting in like 160 on this guy preemptively. That would be nice. I don't know if we're going to get there. Um, we don't have a welder, so we're probably going to have to dead A change right now. Though, if we knock out Jirachi, that's honestly not bad, because then we just need to knock out a Dedene and a Mewtwo. And that seems kind of fine, honestly. So, we'll put the guy back. And yeah, I guess we'll just end up using the Dene here. And yeah, sure, we'll switch into Heatran. And we'll just go for the Dene change here. Okay, we do get Welder, so this feels kind of decent. We have a Eldegoss for next turn as well. So just do that and yeah so we can we can live off this hand for a turn would have liked to have gotten down Vulpix that would have also been nice but so let's see what our opponent is going to do they didn't have too explosive a turn last turn so we'll have to see uh, you know what they're going to do here there is a fire energy from our opponent now of course if they do have a welder they can knock us out with Charizard which feels pretty awful Ooh, just a pass though and I think from there we have game, because we should just be able to use Eldegoss here. Get Welder. And yeah, this should be game, because we can attach both of these. And then from there, attach one more, and we can go for the Hot Burn GX for game. So unfortunately, kind of a slow start from our opponent there, but you know, I'm not going to turn down the window. So yeah, going to take a, a dub over the Mewtwo Mew deck. All right, so we'll call the coin flip, which we do win. So we will definitely choose to go second. You guys know we want to be able to weld a turn one. We want to be able to flare starter if we need to as well. Um, Yeah, this hand's not too good, but I guess we can. I don't know what we're playing against. So I think I like almost rather start double here, maybe. Or we'll do Victine. We'll do Victine because we double is technically a little bit better for the late game anyways and neither one of them can hit for very much on turn one but just kind of curious what are we playing against at this point though i 
Okay, Jirachi doesn't tell us too much about what we're playing against. Okay, there's the ADP, so we know right away what sort of deck we're going to be up against here. And there's a big charm, also super annoying for our deck to deal with. But they don't have an energy attachment. Oh, but they did get one off Intrepid Sword. That's kind of annoying. All right, so, I mean, we could definitely take this turn a few different ways. Uh, we could attempt to go for something like a Cramorant to get down some early damage on the ADP, but I'm honestly fine just knocking out Jirachi if we need to as well. So, yeah, we'll just put back the double for the moment. That seems fine. We'll go for... Sure, we'll just go for Vulpix here. And Communication, we'll put back Ninetales, and we're just going to go for our Crobat here. So we can also put down the Reshizard, and this will allow us to uh, hopefully draw enough to get an attack off with Welder this turn. Okay, so that is perfect. We got our two Fire Energies. That's really what we wanted to see. And if we can get down one more for turn as well, that would be great. Okay, also good. Now, what's bad is our hand for next turn is not in the best of shape. So I think we're just going to do this for the moment and we will just uh, energy burst. So we can knock out Jirachi. Let's see what we get here. Get a fire energy. So, I mean, at least we can get down an attachment, but this hand is really not looking too hot for the next turn, I do have to say. So if we can top deck the Dene or a Quick Ball, something like that, I don't think we've played, you know, we haven't played a single Quick Ball. And there is a boss's orders and okay i guess they're just trying to like trap us for a turn but i mean <laughs> we we have the the switch so we're good there <clears throat> now if they can hit us with a marnie that would be great okay but they're just gonna play down for a crobat actually if they marnie us we lose our switch so maybe we want to keep this hand okay and they're just gonna go for the altered creation Ugh. So that reset stamp's a good card, just not right in this moment. So unfortunately, I think all we can really do is just go for... Yeah, it's just to go for this. So we'll just go for the energy burst. So it's going to soften up this ADP here. Now, if the, they play the Milotic V, we might be in some trouble. That is something I'm definitely a little bit worried about because if they do, they could... Well, I guess they're not going to knock out Victini either way because they're only hitting for 180. So actually, maybe we should have attached uh, to Victini this last turn instead of Reshizard. Yeah, they have the Quick Ball. I imagine we're just going to see the Milotic here. Okay, there is a quick ball as well, getting rid of the ADP. Yeah, and they do play the Milotic. That's actually a pretty big pain for us, I do have to say, guys. Okay, we need to start stabilizing because now our opponent is kind of getting to like this the spot where they can start doing some scary stuff. There is a dead A change for them as well. Come on, Marnie. That's what we're really hoping for at this point. Okay, there's an ultimate race, so we can tank the hit at least, which is good. We can soften this thing up, though I think we're probably going to get a knockout here. Just trying to think what route do we want to go with that. I feel like the way we go, because right now we're 10 short, which is kind of annoying. Man, I really wish we had a welder. Okay, we got pal pad. That's like, it's not nothing, so we'll just go ahead and use that. Um... Yeah, because right now we're hitting 150. It's just shy of where we need. So, yeah, we just go for the... 
Oh, wait, no, we can't even knock this out anyways, because that was the big charm. That feels really bad. Um, right? Because if we do another energy, that's going to be 180, which means we're going to be a little bit short here. Yeah, we definitely should have gotten down our other energy here last turn. I mean, we can still get the KO, but the issue now is that it opens us up to... Like, I think we just lose, to, to be honest, guys. Yeah, the... The big charm really messing things up for us. And unfortunately, we just have to go for this, probably. Um, God, yeah, this feels awful. Yeah, but we, I mean, we have to. We can't ignore the knockout. So we do get Welder, which is nice, Quick Ball, but I think we're just like a little bit of energy too far behind here. There's a Metal Saucer. Now, I'm trying to think, the only realm I can see us winning right now is like maybe doing some shenanigans with like bringing up a Ranguru with Nine Tails and reset stamping them, something like that. Which could work, so let's see, what's it? 50 more for each energy and our retreat cost. So yeah, I think that's kind of our our game plan here. Um yeah, sure, we'll just do this. So yeah, no matter what, they're getting hit with a reset stamp for sure. But ideally this turn, I want to be able to knock out, and we need a lot of energy to pull this off, but I really want to knock out Dene behind a Ranguru. Or actually, no, we just have two prizes left anyway, so I forgot we knocked out the Jirachi. I was thinking we still had to take three prizes. Okay, uh, this just got a lot less scary. So yeah, we'll just go for the Quick Ball here, get rid of the Switch. Okay, so we just need to draw one energy and we win. <laughs> I was super scared there for a second. Yeah, so we'll just go for the Cramorant. And we still do need an energy. That's the the scary part here. Okay, and we got there, guys. Whew. Man, I forgot about that Jirachi. So pretty clutch knocking out the Jirachi there. Made our life a lot easier. So yeah, we'll just go for the Spit Shot. And that is going to be the game. So even with kind of like a, a little bit of a weird start there, it still managed to pull it together. Like I said, I think getting that cheap KO on the Jirachi really paid off. Okay, so it's called the coin flip, which we do win. Uh, and it looks like our opponent might recognize us, so we'll hit them with the hello. And yeah, we're going to just go second here. Pretty self-explanatory. Not a great hand. I mean, we do have Welder, we do have Crobat, but... I don't really want a Welder to a Hoopa. Uh, if they start Jirachi, that could be good, but here it looks like it's gonna be a Volcanion, so probably won't get an easy knockout with this thing. There's a Quick Ball getting rid of a Volcanion. So obviously it's this uh, Scent of Scorch. That's probably the most likely of candidates here. And there is gonna be a Dead A Change. So getting rid of a Tool Scrapper and a Poke Gear Reset Stamp. Or not tool scrapper. I guess Pokey Gear looked like a scrapper to me for a second. I'm not sure, but yeah, they get rid of the stamping gear. Okay, so it is gonna be sent to scorch. So Victini could be a good attacker here. Uh, I think we're probably gonna win by knocking out, like just dealing with the VMAX, sniping the Dene, and then beating this Volcanion. So unfortunately, I do think we uh we welder two to this Hoopa. Okay, so we could actually get a knockout with Heatran, which I think that's the route I want to go with here. Yeah, because we really want to put on some pressure before their deck gets set up, just because these uh, Sense Scorch are going to get scary pretty quickly for us. So we'll just switch. Attach, get down our Lucky Egg. And we'll just go for Crobat. So it's wound up working out pretty good for us. So, I mean, 
I like this hand. I really don't want to get down anything else just yet, though. So we'll just go for the Steaming Stomp. Or actually, no, we should have got down nine tails. That's actually my bad. So, yeah, there is something we should have gotten down there. Uh, but this is still okay because even if we don't get a knockout on this thing, uh, we can still potentially set up a Cramorant play on the Dene. Yeah, and there's Sense Scorch. That feels kind of bad. So, probably would have liked Vulpix down, but again, we can still get there and take the KO on the Dene if we need to. We just need a switching... Actually, no, we, we don't need a switching card. So, that seems like the route we're going to go down. So, just going to hit us for 160. I'm definitely cool with that. Okay, so that is a Fire Crystal. Um, sure, we will Quick Ball. Go for a Cramorant. Seems okay, I suppose. Or, I mean, maybe we should deal with Scent Scorch now that I'm thinking about it. Like, I think we'll just go for what double here, maybe? Because after they knock that out, we'll be doing 180. Now we still need to. I think we're going to power up Reshi's Art here. Because we can go for the Cramorant whenever we need to. Those Dedenes are not going anywhere. I think we just need to deal with the threat that is right uh, available to us right now. So we're just going to go for the Welder here. <clears throat> and so we will... Communication. Put that back in deck. Ooh, we are out of Vulpix. Yeah, we prized Vulpix this game, so that is fine. So we'll just put that back anyways. And I think we'll grab a Volcanion here. Yeah, because we can quick ball the sky away if we need to. And also, like, by not grabbing something like Cramorant or something else, it doesn't sort of reveal anything that's, like, really important uh, for the game here. So we're just going to go for the... Um... No, we do need the Fire Crystal here. So we could hit for 200 this turn, but if they have any healing cards, that feels bad. Now, I think we're just going to gear up for... Ooh, actually, no, we should have been playing Victini this whole time. So... I guess this is fine. I'm not sure. I just don't know what route I want to go with our next turn that we have. Yeah, we'll just do that. Sorry, guys. Not, couldn't really figure out what direction I wanted to go with this turn. So, again, I'm going to hang on to the rest of our hand, though, just to sort of preserve, um, you know, sort of the mystery of what we're playing in this deck. I don't want to reveal the Victini. Don't want to reveal Cramorant if we don't have to. Hey, Giant Hearth. Definitely a card I don't mind uh, coming into play for us there. Because we can actually just go for Eldegoss this next turn, I think. And just get Welder back. We have the Giant Hearth ready to go with it. Okay, yeah, this is definitely an annoying turn from our opponent. So we're just going to knock us out with the Volcanium, which feels pretty bad, I do have to say. Do get some cards off the Lucky Egg. I kind of forgot that was still in play, to be honest, at this point. So that actually helps us a good bit. We don't have to play any of these quick balls or anything. Um, so we're probably trying to go for a Cramorant play, I would imagine, this turn. It seems kind of good. So we'll get back a Welder here. So, sure, we will just communication, put Volcanium back, and we'll get Cramorant. Unfortunately, we don't have Vulpix in deck, so this is a... 
we can't bring up Sense Scorch, which feels really bad. But we will, let's see. I think we will actually play a reset stamp here. Put him down to four card hand, that seems decent. And we'll get rid of a quick ball. So we'll do that, okay. And pal pad, so this feels pretty decent. switch and from there i think i might save this hand because we can always quick ball for dedene if we need to for next turn but i don't think there's anything else we really want to draw though right now so I'll just go for the spit shot um we could even get it on the scent of scorch and try to set that up but i think we're going to go for the dedene here which one of these has the okay we definitely want to take out the one with air balloon Okay, so what do we get here? We get Victini. Okay, so Victini was prize as well. Still no Vulpix. We've gone through literally like half our prizes. Still haven't been able to dig one out just yet. There is a Quick Ball. So maybe going for an Eldegoss or another Sense Scorch if they already have. Okay, but there's the Heatran. Yeah, Heatran would definitely get them a KO here, that's for sure. Um... Now, hopefully they just get the knockout on Kramer and not Reshizard. That would feel really bad. There's going to be a reset stamp. Okay, so we can uh, grab a Dedenne off of our Quick Ball. That feels pretty good. Now, hopefully they do knock out this Kramer with Heatran. I think that'd be best case scenario, honestly. Because then we can just attach, knock it out with uh, Flare Strike. And then from there, we just have to pick off uh, this other Dedenne to eventually win, probably. Just quick ball. The, the reason in particular I would like them to knock us out with Heatran is because it would siphon energy off of their other Pokemon. And there's Double. Double's another scary Pokemon for us here, but there's the Welder. Yeah, this feels bad because now if they switch, they don't have to take any energy away from their from their sense score. So yeah, they're having a pretty good turn. This is actually kind of scary now that I'm looking at this. And if we knock this guy out, I mean, we have to knock it out with Reshizard. That's the thing that, that sucks here. Um, we do have another reset stamp in hand, so. Yeah, this is a, uh... Yeah, we have time reset Samper. I feel like we're just going to lose this, it seems. So, sure, we'll just do that. And where's the dance? There we go. And we did put back these welders. Yeah, so we have all four welders still in deck. And we're about to dead a change with half our deck gone. So hopefully we should be able to draw into one. Okay, that's pretty good. So we can... Um, we definitely want to welder before Ordinary Rod just because we really want to find that other reset stamp. And let's just double check, make sure I'm not going crazy. Yeah, it is in deck. So we definitely want to find that. It's going to be very important this turn. And yeah, I guess we probably just probably just welder two here, just to threaten the uh, KO on Sense Scorch. Ugh, unfortunately, guys, we did not get there. So more than likely, they have game here, which is definitely unfortunate. So yeah, that's rough. So I, we're just gonna have to just gonna have to go for the flare strike, unfortunately. And yeah, so if they have water, we just lose. But if not, I mean, I guess we could still lose because they could scale Sense Scorch up enough to knock us out, right? Because right now they're hitting what? Uh, 40, 80, 120, 160, 220. Oh, but there's the boss order. So they can just win that way as well. Pretty, pretty close one. Prizing both the Vulpix wound up being kind of an annoying aspect of this game for us, but. Um, you know, it's hard to say if it would have gone differently if we if we didn't have the Vulpix, but 
or if we have the Vulpix in play. But yeah, we are going to lose to Sinus Scorch. Pretty close game uh, regardless, though. Alrighty, guys, that's going to wrap up our look here at Fire Toolbox. I mean, as you can see, I think the deck is still solid, even though it did lose Victini Prism, Turtonator, you know, Heat Factory, the Jirachi Engine, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think the deck still has legs to stand on. You know, Fire just has so many good attackers still in the format, as you can see. Uh, Cramorant and Double also give the deck some cool options to dealing with uh, certain archetypes out there as well. So, I mean, guys, if you are still a fan of Welder decks and you're bored of Scent Scorch, definitely uh, sleeve this thing up or take it for a spin on PTC Joe. I think it still is a pretty solid deck, even despite what it lost in the rotation this year. Uh, but with that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy today's content. If you did, of course, smack that like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you can, consider supporting this channel as well by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up some merch from our online store, rarecandytcg.com. It would mean a lot. But as always, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.